Hi, this is Usha. Welcome to Rathod Science Classes. Today in this lecture, we are going to see current affairs of 24th April 2022. So let's get started with our discussion and let us try to see today's quote. So today's quote is given by Swami Vivekananda. He says, in a day when you don't come across any problems, you can be sure that you are traveling in a wrong path. So whenever you are moving in a right direction, of course, you will be come across the problems. So for that problems, you need to find solutions. Then only you are in a right way. So whenever you are not getting or no, you are not coming across any problem means for sure you will be in a wrong path. So this is the thing which mainly said by our Swami Vivekananda. So whenever you are getting problems or whenever you are coming across problems, try to find the solutions for those problems and try to find a solution and you have to again come back to your own path. So this is the lesson. So now let us try to see first topic it is regarding WTO that is World Trade Organization may ease curbs on Indian grain exports. So now one of the hot topic is India's wheat exports, right? So due to this Russia-Ukraine crisis, so that led to some crisis in the food grains for especially European countries. So now Egypt mainly said that we are going to import, we are going to import wheat from India. So but whenever Egypt want to import the wheat, so here India need to India need to achieve something that is achieve some standards. For example, here it need to follow sanitary and phytosanitary measures of WTO to export Indian wheat to this Egypt. And apart from that, whenever we want to go for transport of this wheat to this Egypt means the freight cost is very much high. So these are some important challenges. So in WTO, we have sanitary and phytosanitary measures. So you need to understand what are those sanitary and phytosanitary measures. So this article is important from economy and even from your international relations point of view, which mainly comes under GS paper 2 and paper 3 respectively. First of all, let us try to see context. If you see context, it mainly says that Director General of WTO, that is World Trade Organization, they are mainly focusing to resolve this WTO rules, okay, to resolve this WTO rules, which are making very much difficult for Indian wheat export to meet the shortages in other countries. So due to this Russia-Ukraine crisis, that led to decreased uh, production of wheat. So which are the countries dependent on this wheat of this Russia and Ukraine? So now they are facing food crisis and now those countries which are mainly searching for alternatives for this Russia and Ukraine for their wheat. So now they got one country that is alternative here is India. So India we got excess or surplus production of wheat. So here we are mainly focusing for the export of that wheat from our country to other countries. So whenever we want to export this wheat from India to other countries, so we need to follow sanitary and phytosanitary measures under this WTO rules. So here now WTO Director General, she mainly focusing to resolve this WTO issues to increase the export of this wheat because many countries are facing crisis regarding their food grains. So this is the thing which mainly said by our finance minister. So if you see details, it mainly says that countries like India which can probably supply food grains mainly for the countries which are mainly facing some food grain crisis. So this is the thing which mainly said by our finance minister. So this is the thing which mainly said in World Bank or IMF International Monetary Fund Spring Meetings. So in this context, Director General of this WTO mainly said that due to this Russia-Ukraine war, so it mainly led to number of challenges that led to decreasing of food grains production in Russia and Ukraine. And even that led to decreasing of supply of neon, palladium and even there is also led to increase of uh, increase of energy security for especially countries which are dependent on this Russian gas, for example Germany and even some European countries dependent on this Russia for their oil and gas imports. So that had been affected. 
and even number of automobile industries so which are mainly dependent on this uh, neon and as well as palladium of russia they are also affected here so because of all these things that mainly led to increasing of commodity prices and that also led to some opportunities especially if you're talking about opportunities which mainly provided by this russia ukraine crisis for india here is to export food grains such as wheat okay and not only this even manufactured goods which can be exported to destinations for which supplies had been unreliable and even india has reached out more than 20 countries regarding the exporting of wheat and india had a target like 15 million tons of wheat to be exported this year according to this bloomberg report so this bloomberg report says that india has a target of export of about 15 million tons of wheat this year and india is also expected to have this surplus this year and it is mainly producing about 111 million tons of crop and out of this 15 million crop should be exported so this is target of india according to this bloomsburg report and india's export of food grains to meet this global market shortages that is mainly already discussed by our external affairs minister in recent two plus two meet okay that held in washington dc so if you're talking about some facts regarding what is the sanitary and phytosanitary measures so under WTO there is one clause that is sanitary and phytosanitary measures so here this measures which mainly deals with restricting of exports so whenever exports are not meeting the standards that is international standards regarding germs or bacteria etc so there will be restriction of exports that is mainly seen so this mainly seen in some industries like marine industries food industries food processing units and even other packaged food so this is about this topic now let us try to see next topic it is regarding fog lands issue so argentina to revive fog lands issue in india so this article is important from international relations and even you can get a uh, prelims based questions regarding this fog lands so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail we are going to see some facts regarding this fog lands as well so government of argentina it will launch a campaign in india and this campaign which is mainly demanding negotiation with United Kingdom to settle territorial dispute over this Falklands. So between Argentina, UK, so there is issue regarding this Falkland Islands and here now government of Argentina, it is mainly going to launch a campaign regarding negotiations of this Falkland issue. So if you see details, it mainly says that. So the initiative which mainly comes two days after visit of a British Prime Minister and it also coincides with this 40th anniversary of conflict between UK and Argentina regarding this Falkland issue. Right, so, so the commission for a dialogue on this question of uh, this Falklands which is mainly launched by Foreign Affairs Minister International Trade and Worship of Argentina. So recently one article which mainly published on April 2nd, okay, so this article which mainly said that dispute had not been settled with a cessation of hostilities in 1982. So again, we need to go for resumption of this bilateral dialogue once again. So this commission which mainly asked to promote compliance with the resolutions as per United Nations, okay, and we need to follow international fora and we need to resolve this issue in this in, in this international fora so this is about this topic and if you are talking about where exactly these Falkland islands located so this is our south america so this is argentina and this is chile and here you can see this is the island that is Falkland islands so in this Falkland islands we have west Falkland and east Falkland and this capital city of this Falkland island that is stanley which is located in this east Falkland so these are some important geographical locations that you have to remember so if you are talking about this Falkland islands you can also see the importance of this Falkland islands when you refer ocean currents okay so if you are talking about some facts regarding this Falkland islands so they are also called as Malvinas islands or Spanish uh, Spanish Islas island and internally they are self-governing overseas territory of UK. So it is a self-governing territory of UK in South Atlantic Ocean region and it mainly lies about 300 miles northeast of southern tip of South America. Okay and the capital city which is Stanley located in 
East Falkland region and we are having mainly two islands in this Falkland that is East, Island, East Falkland and as well as West Falkland and 200 smaller islands are also present here. So this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic. It is regarding rape laws or being misused today. So whenever you are seeing uh, or whenever you are reading newspaper, you will be coming across number of news regarding this rape. But where raped, uh, so where this rape incidents had happened, so on on the on which girl like so on in which area it is not at all necessary, but you have to uh, have a knowledge regarding so what are the rape laws which are present in India because recently here marital rape is also in news so here there are high chance of getting question regarding this uh, rape in your prelims and as well as meal and plus in your means especially regarding this marital rape so now let's try to see this topic in a very great detail so actually here retired supreme court judge that is bnc krishna he made some statements regarding this rape laws in india so title says that rape laws are being misused today so this is the thing which mainly said by retired supreme court judge that is justice bnc krishna so this article is important from our polity point of view which mainly comes under gs paper too so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if you see context it mainly says that retired supreme court judge that is justice bnc krishna he said that there is no doubt that the rape laws are being misused in the country so the rape laws are misused in the country so here he mainly says some examples with his personal experience so when he was judge there were some whenever there is cohabitation or a consensual relationship that is we can say like live in relationship so whenever the disagreement which is mainly coming across between those people means women mainly cries rape so this is the one issue he mainly come across and apart from that there are also some instances like whenever there is a serious uh, secret affair which is mainly going on means people when get to know of it means in order to come out of this ignominy, ignominy so women mainly cries of rape so these are the two instances he mainly uh, came with his personal experience so in this context your bn sri krishna says that yes here rape laws are being misused today in our country so if you are talking about some important details statistics mainly shows that even after the amendment of rape laws there has been a less number of convictions so one important thing here is there are less number of conventions which are mainly seen here so in this context here justice bn c krishna also says that so we need to question here is women really sub subjected to cruelty and atrocities because on one side there is decreased number of convictions even though there is amendment to the rape laws but on another side here there is misuse of this rape laws which is mainly seen so in this context we need to uh, we need to question here that whether women is really subjected to cruelty and atrocities or not so otherwise in the general course of things here whenever woman who is filing a rape case means so what happened so innocent innocent will be presumed as an accused unless and until so he mainly proven guilty so unless that so and so person who mainly proven guilty so he will be per presumed as an accused right so however in the rape cases whatever the woman says is treated as a truth here so but it but it is not the intention of the law here but here it is not at all talking about empowering of women here so this is the thing which mainly said by our former chief justice of higher kerala high court right so he mainly gave the statement uh, on by mainly screening of documentary film that is india sons india sons film and so in this film uh, it mainly shows some stories of some innocent men who is falsely accused of rape and later getting acquitted so here by giving by screening this uh, film here so this is the thing which mainly said by our former uh, chief uh, justice of kerala high court so here uh, if you see one important statement which is also given by sri krishna uh, sir here is so he mainly says that whenever any person who is accused of rape means in newspapers and tv channels they will be getting news and they will be forecasting that in a rewind manner as well so and so person he mainly raped Okay, rape this so and so girl in so and so village so whenever uh, charges are going on whenever investigation is going on whenever that person 
if if that person who is not the person who did that thing means so that thing will not be given as much as highlighted thing that mainly given by or showcased by newspapers and as such news channels so it will be like a terrible thing okay it will be like a terrible thing so this is the thing which mainly said by our chief justice okay not chief justice but he is a retired judge of uh, supreme court that is bnc krishna there are many committees under the name of this bnc krishna as well so let me know some of the committees of this uh, bnc krishna so which or the topics which mainly dealt by those committees so now let us try to see some facts regarding this rape laws in india so rape it is one of the most heinous offenses which mainly committed on women and it is also worse than a murder so rape which mainly causes infringement of women's rights and liberty so what is the rape rape it is one of the heinous offense which mainly committed on women and it is worse than a murder and rape which mainly causes infringement of women's rights and as well as liberty so it is also defined as international uh, sorry intentional and as well as unlawful sexual intercourse with a woman without her consent okay so here uh, this uh, rape it is nothing but unintentional okay so here here women will be involved here okay so without her consent so men want to men want to have sexual pleasure from this men so from men side it is intentional from women side it is unintentional right so here rape it is defined as intentional and unlawful sexual intercourse with a woman and women will be not giving a consent so this comes under the rape so we are talking about laws in india so we have section 375 of indian penal code so section 375 of ipc which mainly talks about this uh, rape and this section which mainly makes it very much clear that intercourse would account to rape only during the absence of women's consent so when there is no women's consent that mainly comes under this rape and rape as a clearly defined offense was first introduced in ipc in 1860s right and even one more section section 376 of ipc which mainly talks about punishment it mainly says that 7 years of jail term to life imprisonment for the people who mainly commits the offense of rape so if you are talking about next article which mainly says about this sarmat missiles so russia to deploy the sarmat missiles by autumn so here you can get a question like sarmat missiles is a news so with to which country it belongs to it is belongs to russia so this article is important from your gs paper 3 under science and technology so now let us try to see this topic in a very great detail so if we are talking about context it mainly says that russia plans to deploy its newly tested sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile so intercontinental means it can be fired from one continent and it can be target another continent so we are having totally seven continents right so from one continent if you are firing so it can reach the another continent that means we can see the range of this missile will be very 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 large right so here ballistic missile means it will be taking this projectile path and this missile which is mainly having capable of mounting nuclear strikes against us by atom so if you are talking about details it mainly says that so this missile it is having a capability of carrying 10 or more nuclear warheads it can carry 10 or more nuclear warheads so this is the one important thing and the striking target here is thousands of miles away okay thousands of miles so we are talking about some facts regarding this uh, sarmat missile so rs28 sarmat is reported to be able to carry 10 or more warheads it is having capability to carry 10 or more warheads and decoys so it has a capability of firing over either on the earth poles with a range of 11000 to 18000 km so now you can understand what is the range it is 11000 to 18000 km and it is also expected to pose a significant challenge to ground and satellite based radar tracking system as well so it has the capability to carry 10 warheads okay and this sarmat will also 
also be the first Russian missile which can carry smaller hypersonic boost uh, glide vehicles as well. And it is a liquid fuel missile which mainly compared to US uh, con intercontinental ballistic missile which mainly move on solid fuel systems. So these are some important things. And now let us try to see next topic it is regarding blue stagger stars. So here we are having some blue stagger. Normally stars will be in red in color but there are some strange stars that is blue stagger. Now let us try to understand the behavior of this blue stagger. The title says why are blue stagger stars different from the normal? So this article is important from again science and technology which mainly comes in the GS paper 3. So now let us try to see context. It's not only humans who appear eccentric. Eccentric means nothing but strange behavior. But even some stars they will be having this strange behavior as well. So one such case is that blue straggles. Okay, so blue straggles, they are having some different behavior when we are comparing with that of this normal stars. To understand what is the reason behind this uh, strange behavior of the stragglers, the scientists, they try to understand their eccentricity after studying them for a long years. So by this Indian Institute of Astrophysics, Bangalore, so researchers, they mainly found some support for of one way to understand what is the reason for the strangest behavior of these blue stragglers? So, if you are talking about this research, they first they first made some observations by using this ultraviolet imaging telescope of Atrosat. And here, first of all, they found the color of the star. So, if you are talking about, for example, our sun, it is also a brightest star, right? So, it is also called as a main sequence star. So, it mainly gives its mass and as well as age, okay? And here in the sun, we are mainly, it is mainly converting hydrogen into helium here. So whenever hydrogen is converted into helium, so the core will be getting denser without any outer layers or expanding. And finally, that will bloat into a red giant star. So after whatever this fuel that is mainly stored here, if after that uh, spending of that fuel entirely, then the size of this uh, sun will be decreased and it will be becoming a white star that will be the end of its life. So if you are talking about uh, how to study the behavior of star. So first of all we need to identify the color of the star. So after identification of the color of the star. So we can get some details regarding temperature and as well as magnitude. So based on the temperature and magnitude we can see the different types of uh, colors of stars which are mainly seen. Okay. So there are some few stars they are just at the stage in their stages of their life. So they expected to start expanding in their size and cooling down very fastly and what happened they also grow brighter and as well as hotter blue in color. So those are called as blue stragglers. Okay so if you are talking about some facts regarding these blue stragglers. So the, now there is a puzzle of why a blue straggler is most massive and as well as energetic than expected may be resolved in several ways. So researchers mainly found three important reasons for this strange behavior of this blue stragglers. So first one here is, so they are mainly belonging to the stars, okay. So they do not belong to the family of the stars. So because of this, they do not have the group properties. And next one is, straggler draws matter. They will be getting matter from this giant uh, companion and as well as they will be growing into a more massive size. Okay, so this is also second important reason and third one here is the straggler draws matter from a companion star but that there is a third star that facilitates this process but that there is a third star. So whenever it is getting energy from this companion uh, star it mainly comes out of this third possibility. So actually this article which mainly says that scientists mainly came up with this second hypothesis that these stragglers, they draw matter from the giant companion and finally they will grow into a massive size and they will be attaining hot and as well as blue color. So now let us try to see next topic. Title says huge tall. So this article mainly talking about antibiotic resistance. So this article is also important from your GS paper 3 under science and technology. So now let us try to understand what is this antibiotic resistance, how harmful it is. So if you are talking about context, it mainly says that 
more than 1.2 million more than 1.2 million people they died in 2019 so why because of antibiotic resistance so if they are getting infection means if they are taking any antibodies you are not working on this infections so because of this that will leads to further increasing of infections and that that will leads to mortality so if you are talking about details it mainly says that the burden has highest in sub saharan africa and as well as south asia with the children who are under age of 5 years so children under age of 5 years are at most risk and another 5 million people they died in 2019 from disease with of uh, which are mainly having this antibiotic resistance from bacteria so if we are talking about what is this antimicrobial resistance so antimicrobial resistance means we will be having microbes like bacteria is there virus is there fungi parasite etc so this antimicrobial resistance it is a resistance which may be acquired by microorganisms per se bacteria virus fungi parasites etc again some antimicrobial drugs like antibiotics antifungals antivirals anti malarials anti helminths etc so these are the drugs which mainly used to treat some infections so as a result we are having some standard treatments become most ineffective so because of this infection which mainly persist and will be also spreading to others and that will leads to increasing of mortality so microorganisms that develop antimicrobial resistance they are sometimes referred as superbugs as well so there are number of articles we discussed about the superbugs in our earlier hindu analysis so even this world health organization has identified this antimicrobial resistance as one of the top 10 threats to the global health and if you are talking about what are the reasons for the spread of this antimicrobial resistance so first one is there is a misuse of antimicrobials so for example even if you are suffering from uh, any small fever so you will be going to any medical shop and if you ask the tablets for any uh, fever means they will be giving you antibiotics for sure right so because of this we can say there is a racial use of antibiotics is seen and even if you are taking any antibiotics you have to complete entire course of 5 days but you are not taking here so in between if you are feeling better between in the 3 days itself you are going to stop and after stopping what happened that infection caused micro that will be developing a protective layer so after some time after some days again this bacteria will be multiplying and now this bacteria will be having a protective shield against it so again you will be taking that same antibiotic but this will be not working now so this is antimicrobial resistance and next one is even whenever any company that is pharmaceutical company which is mainly preparing this antibiotics means so whatever the waste that is generated so that waste which when we when this waste it is leave, it which is mainly uh, thrown in untreated into the sewage or nearby water okay then that will be also leading to contamination of water and that will be also leading to antimicrobial resistance so this is about this topic and now let us try to see next topic it is regarding genetically modified mosquito so this is our genetically modified mosquito so this is a one of the important achievements in our science and technology i can say because mosquito is one of the important vector which mainly causes number of diseases like chikungunya malaria dengue so mosquito is one of the important cause so here we need to decrease this mosquitoes mainly to avoid this type of diseases which are this mosquito warn diseases so now let us try to understand this topic this is also important from our science and technology which mainly comes under gs paper 3 so now let us try to understand what is genetically modified mosquito how they can useful to control this diseases which mainly caused by this vector so if you see context it mainly says that so results from this op first open air study of genetically modified mosquito in united states which mainly released so here here in this study they mainly came up with bioengineering so bioengineering of male aedes aegypti mosquito so they mainly took this aedes aegypti mosquito in male they came up with bioengineering so after that they will be hatching okay and after hatching so what are the offsprings that they all get so they will be mating with the wild population 
so in that population which are the females so in that females they will be inheriting some deadly gene okay deadly gene from this bioengineered dad so because of this gene before a before adult before reaching their adulthood they will be dying so in this way we can decrease the females of this aedes aegypti mosquito so why only females so male mosquitoes they will be feeding on the nectar but these female mosquitoes they will be feeding on the blood so because of this here whenever they are coming to suck the blood so they will be releasing some saliva so in this saliva so this microorganisms or microbe which are causing disease will be there so we because of this whenever we are trying to decrease this female of mosquito population means we can also decrease the diseases as well so if you see what is the study so the aim of this study it is to reduce the population of this wild aegypti mosquitoes and they mainly carrying some vector uh, they mainly carrying some virus called as chikungunya related virus dengue virus zika virus yellow fever etc so what are these genetically modified mosquitoes so these mosquitoes they are mass produced in laboratory and these genetically modified mosquitoes they will be carrying two important genes so first one is self limiting genes so this self limiting genes which mainly prevent prevents this a female mosquito to enter into this adulthood and next one is fluorescent uh, marker gene so this will be helpful mainly to identify whether that is a genetically modified mosquito or not because whenever a special uh, red light which is focused means that will be glowing so in this way we can identify that is genetically modified or not so genetically modified mosquitoes they are produced in the laboratory okay and they will lay eggs and these eggs which mainly carrying these two genes that is self limiting gene and as well as fluorescent marker gene and this g genetically modified mosquito eggs eggs that carry this self limiting and as well as uh, this uh, fluorescent gene they are released into an area so after that they will be going for hatching and they develop into an adult okay at a stage and after developing into adult they will be mate with the wild females and these genes are passed into their offspring and what happens so later in that offspring they will be having a protein so this protein which mainly prevents a female aedes aedes mosquito uh, mainly to enter into this pre, uh, adulthood so whenever it is mainly entering into adulthood that will dies so in this way here female offspring mainly die before becoming adults so in this way the number of uh, this female aedes aegypti mosquito in this area will be decreased so this is about this study and now let us try to see yesterday's question the first one is regarding hot springs actually these questions from your geography point of view so the hot water and vapor sprouts from geyser tube intermittently and next one is it represents a minor form of border process of volcanicity and it mainly found only in tropical regions so yes prelims is a very very near and elimination techniques which finally works for clearing of prelims so there you have to identify some extreme words you have to identify some extreme words so i am trying to come up with a video uh, like how to clear your prelims i will be giving you some steps in that video and it will be coming up soon okay so if you are talking about this geysers and hot springs they are not only if you see the extreme word here is only it is not only seen in tropical regions but also even in temperate regions for example in russia we have this uh, valley and we are also having these type of hot springs and geysers in yellowstone national park in uh, usa right so here yeah, they are also found in this temperate regions not only in tropical regions so we can easily eliminate this third statement so the correct statement here is 4 3 only other two statements are absolutely correct and next question is regarding earthquake so the primary waves are analogous to sound waves that can travel through liquid medium yes and second waves are analogous to water ripples they cannot pass through liquid medium yes and the surface wave are most destructive and slowest among these three waves c s yes. okay and here you have to identify incorrect statements so all these three statements are correct so incorrect is none of the above and today's practice questions of the first one is regarding volcanoes so more than 95 percentage of global volcanoes they are along the plate boundaries and high intensity volcanoes types like viscous types and pelian types etc are concentrated in the convergent plate boundaries and low intensity volcanoes like mid atlantic ridges are concentrated in the divergent boundaries yes you have to identify the correct statements and the next question is regarding 
regarding different types of relief first order relief second order relief and third order relief okay and you have to find the correct pair so try to give the options of these questions in the comment box and we came up with this main answer writing practice course you can join this and the distance are still open so apart from this mains answer writing course so we are also ready to launch this entire pen drive course for your foundational course of 2023 so here we are discussing each and every topic in your syllabus and we are discussing previous years prelims and mains questions and what are the lectures are taken so that will be based on our new trends of upsc pattern right so if you want to join these courses you can register in our website rathors is academy there you can click on course list and there you can see wide range of courses that we are offering in our in our rathors is academy so if you want to resolve any queries you can call me on this number 8074765513 and it's also the telegram uh, whatsapp number you can also message me and if you want the pdf of this class you can get pdf in our telegram channel link is given in description box so now let us try to see today's hindu newspaper pdf so this is our today's hindu date is 24th april and this is delhi edition so this article regarding this wto i discussed right and the next topic if you see here you can see here different uh, different feathers trapped together so this is about the birds so this article says that capture and trade of 1200 varieties of indigenous birds they are found in india are prohibited but out of this about 300 of them are sold openly in city markets so here you to know about what is wildlife protection act of 1972 and some provisions of this wildlife act wildlife protection act and you have to know about prevention of cruelty to animals act here okay so these are the two important acts that you have to know regarding this topic and if you move forward leave this uh, page and here in this state page also i found nothing which is much important and here in this news page here you can see army not against removal of asp aspa that is here you have to know what is this aspa that is armored forces special parts act of 1958 so this is very important already there are a number of articles we discussed regarding that and here you see this article regarding this Falklands issue i already discussed and one article in this page, page number eight here is delhi reports first case of ba2.12 strain actually this strain which is uh, mainly formed uh, from the sub lineage of omicron variant and as well as b8 b uh, okay it is a sub lineage of this omicron variant of the sars coronavirus and this variant it is mainly considered as a more transmissible variant than compared to that of uh, this omicron variant so be, please be cautious and try to follow this covid 19 related protocol so please be safe stay home and study well and uh, next law uh, next act in uh, next article is regarding rape law i discussed this topic and if you move further in this world page you can see regarding this Sam, uh, sarmat uh, missile i discussed this topic and here there is one article that after talks with imf pakistan agrees to reduce fuel subsidies so here you know about what is the role of this imf okay pakistan's new finance minister agreed with imf recommendations to reduce fuel subsidies and and a business tax amnesty scheme here so this is about some structural reforms in pakistan and if you see in the science and technology page you can see one article that is covid 19 search preparedness with artificial intelligence genome surveillance so this article is also very important i discussed regarding this antibiotic resistance i discussed about this gm mosquito trail and there is one article regarding this new sub variants so omicron sub variants ba.4 ba.5 found in south africa they are now growing a prevalence okay and according to lab studies their mutation might enable them to evade immunity which mainly gained by vaccines so whatever the immunity that is antibodies which we generated in our body after taking this covid 19 vaccines so that immunity will not going to identify this ba4 and as well as ba5 sub lineages and i discussed regarding this blue staggler stars okay and there is one article regarding this hiv vaccine you can also refer this computer modeling for this hiv vaccine okay so what is this hiv you have to know that is human immunodeficiency virus it mainly causes this is called as aids 
and there is one article regarding this energy in hydrogen can be harnessed by generating electricity with it so it is mainly talking about generating of electricity from banana peel and if you see this faq page i discussed regarding this uh, article of covid 19 excess deaths so we had a discussion and we also discussed about this solomon security pact twice okay so these are the some important articles that appeared in this today's newspaper i hope you enjoyed this lecture please subscribe to our thoughts is and don't forget to like share and comment my videos thank you so much